Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation. Recorded live April 14th, 2011. In this session, Oliver Jones of Itty Bitty Apps demonstrates Test Flight, an online service for iOS application developers that assists in running public betas. Um, yes, I was uh, kind of dobbed in for this by my boss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, Sean and I have just started using TestFlight ourselves, so it's sort of new information to us as well. Hopefully it's new to you guys. Um, uh, basically, what I'm going to be talking about is like what it is and what it's not and how it works. Is, uh, I'm not going to do a live demo. I've got kind of all pre-prepared demo, um, which I'll talk you guys through. Uh, the problem that uh, TestFlight is trying to solve is the problem of uh, ad hoc beta testing. Like, um, I don't know how many of you guys have actually tried to beta test or test an app uh, with a relatively large sample of, of testers and sort of the problems that you have to, to deal with ad hoc provisioning. Um, it kind of hurts a bit. So uh, TestFlight's really there to uh, sort of try and solve some of the problems. It doesn't um, solve every problem. You still have to deal with the iOS provisioning portal, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, the, you know, setting up of ad hoc keys and, and uh, registering your devices and what have you uh, with uh, the iOS provisioning portal. Anyway, so what is TED test flight and how does it help? Well, first of all, I'll talk about what it's not. Uh, it's not the holy grail of, of, uh, of beta testing, <laughs> um, uh, but it does come close um, to being the holy grail. Um, so, what it actually is, is uh, a free app, uh, it's free for app developers and testers, um, so there's no cost at all to using it, you just go to testlightapp.com and sign up. Uh, it is a really great beta tester wrangler, um, essentially deals with all of the hassle of um, grabbing uh, people's uh, device keys off their phones um, and also doing uh, handling all of the communication, all the emails, all of the stuff around that. And the other really awesome thing that it does is it does over the air beta build delivery. So you don't have to email all of your beta testers binaries and get them to drag and drop it into iTunes or, or any of that. It just, they go to a website and they press a button and it turns up on their phone. So, registration starts at testflightapp.com, as I said before, it's really simple, just sign up with the, um, the form, if you're not a developer you don't check the I'm a developer box, um, and you get sent an email, um, and that email should be opened up on your iPhone, you of course open it up on your Mac, um, but if you click on the login button it tells you to open it up on your iPhone. So, um, when you do that, um, yeah, so remember, to, if you're in a corporate situation, for example, a lot of, um, we're, Sean and I are dealing with corporate individuals at the moment, and uh, they, they don't have iPhones necessarily hooked up to their, um, uh, up to their iPhone, well, their corporate email account, which is an email account that they've sent us, uh, is not hooked up to their iPhone, so um, uh, there's a little way around, around that, which is uh, quite useful. Um, I'll show you that in a moment, but uh, yeah, it's kind of important to sign up with a, an address that you can actually access on your, on your iPhone. Um, when you uh, access the website, you get this little green button, register your device. This seems to mystify corporate individuals, um, which I'll get into later. But uh, uh, anyway, when you click that button, you get presented with this um, uh, other screen, which is not a website, it's actually part, built into the iPhone OS. You can tap the little install button and it asks you to install a profile, security profile. Well, it's, it's not really a security profile, it's an enrollment profile. Um, this is the same, uh, it's the same infrastructure that um, you use when managing uh, devices in a corporate environment. Um, I don't know if any of you went to WWDC last year, but they had a couple of um, uh, really great talks on managing uh, iOS devices within a corporate environment and um, enrolling them into the network and uh, it lets you, con it lets, once you've enrolled into a corporate environment um, or an enterprise, they call it enterprise, I guess not really corporate, but 
they the device sort of uh, gets owned by the by the enterprise. Or at least when you're sort of signing your life away when you when you tap the I agree and installing um, the corporate provisioning profiles. Um, because those profiles can do all sorts of things. They can change your settings on your phone. Uh, they can change all sorts of requirements like your passcode and uh, whether or not you've got an encrypted file system and all the rest of it, or whether or not um, the encrypted file system on iOS 4 is actually in use. Um, so I've kind of, I'm, I'm, I don't know enough about the infrastructure to know whether or not um, uh, enrolling your device with uh, test flight is any sort of security issue or not because um, I don't know exactly enough about the the capabilities of the um, enrollment and the provisioning um, that uh, functionality that they're using. Test flight are not um, someone with a question? Just um, that looks disturbingly like the thing that you have to use at RMIT. Right. To get wireless. And the thing that Jeff was talking about that you can't use with Yeah. yeah. And you have to actually remove that from your device and then go and download it again and try to install it again. And if you've got some of these document readers, third-party document readers on your, mm. on your device, they intercept it. Right. And you can't install it. So okay, yeah. people are having problems. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, you should be able to enroll into multiple into multiple enterprises and, and to uh, multiple servers that hand out these things. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um, the, the, so fortunately, the test flight uh, enrollment doesn't do anything nasty to your phone. Um, uh, anyway, the, for more information, this will be on the website later, but there's a bunch of uh, documents and uh, videos and, and stuff in iTunes U and on the developer website. Uh, all about the infrastructure. In fact, even building your own infrastructure. The guys at test flight have basically built uh, probably went to the sessions at DubDub and uh, had the smart idea to actually build um, all of this based on the existing technology that Apple made available. Apple doesn't actually ship a product that uh, lets you do this, but they provide sample code and uh, Ruby uh, website sort of shell that lets you sort of start doing this yourself. Um, anyway, the other interesting thing is that for a number of devices that I've used, um, enrollment can actually fail when you do this, and this is probably also confusing users. Um, it doesn't actually fail though, um, it just says it does. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, if you do the click on the try again button and um, uh, it'll just go through the whole process again and then succeed. Um, but if you hit the refresh button in Safari, it'll just come back and say success. Um, I don't know what, what's wrong there exactly, but it's obviously a bug of some kind. Um, when you've installed the profile um, or the enrolled in, and you, only thing that uh, TestFlight does is installs the TestFlight um, web clip. And uh, it's also installing keys like security keys and cryptographic keys in the background as well. But um, that kind of all bundled in with the enrollment profile, uh, which you can delete from your settings. Um, and you can also delete the web clip, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, when you click the web clip, uh, it launches into the. Um, uh, test flight website. Um, this is actually the successful registration page, not the page you normally get after you've successfully registered, um, which uh, normally is a dashboard of apps that you can potentially install, uh, which you, um, obviously is empty unless you're, if you're not participating in any beta tests or any testing. Anyway, if we go back to the website, um, once you're in, once you've registered, uh, the application wants to um, basically have you create a team, what they call a team. Now, it's not really a a team; it's more of a project. Like if you're an independent developer and you are um, working for as a you know, work for hire or something, you might use this as sort of your top level uh, way of organising, like what organisations you're working with or what particular applications you're working on. Um, so here I've named it my create, my, well, my project. Um, okay, uh, once you've uh, signed in, you need to start inviting and getting people involved in your beta test program. So um, they provide an email invitation system, um, which is simple enough to use, but a little bit tedious because you have to individually uh, invite people. Um, so uh, to 
rectify that, they offer this system, which is recruitment, where you don't actually have to go out and know a whole bunch of people have got iPhones who you want to invite. You can just make it public. You can, um, if you click on that link, uh, it takes you to another form where you can uh, describe what you're trying to beta test. If you're like a public app that you want to put up on the store, um, or if it's just something for internal use, um, uh, you can you know do whatever you want. And then they give you a bit of the URL. Uh, to uh, take you to a form which uh, lets you look, lets you sign up essentially as a tester for this particular project, um, and that form looks like this. Um, so if you're not a user yet, you can join. Uh, if you are, you can just log in, and you automatically get assigned in as a recruit to that project. Uh, the yeah gets you sort of yeah I'm a recruit. Um, anyway, back on the website. The uh, <laughs> back on the oh yeah when when you recruit um, sorry uh, you uh, what well, sorry going back a little bit um, when you are invited you get sent an email so um, and that's you can accept it um, and uh, you get to you go to the website um, and I was logged in when I took that screenshot so it said I was logged in but I then accepted that invite. Um, and I can open my uh, <coughs> my dashboard. Uh, the, the process is kind of similar in um, uh, when you're a, a recruit. Um, you get sent emails and and uh, and back in in my coding bat cave, um, I get uh, sent a bunch of emails whenever people start accepting my invitations or uh, being recruited in. Um, and as you can see, all the details of the phones that uh, users using get sent to you, their device IDs, um, which aren't masked out, but they are here, um, and their version numbers of their operating systems and, and so on. Um, and also you get a little text file um, with their key, their device ID, which you can upload into um, a provisioning profile. But we'll um, all of this is actually kind of pointless, um, other than being notification, because all of this information is available on the website as well. Um, so you don't need to um, uh, sort of deal with that. But yes, it is kind of manual, and I'll get to it in a minute. Um, anyway, um, so back at the, the test flight website, you can see I've got two recruits there. Um, now, recruits obviously can, like if you're doing a public web, um, a public app, that you're going to sell on the store and you just want to beta test it before you put it up uh, with a, a broader range of people, you might have certain um, needs like version numbers or, or of operating systems or whatever. So you don't necessarily have to accept all of your um, all of your testers. Um, in fact, today I, I got a recruit who was had an iPhone 3 with th three point something or other, and we don't we can't test um, on three because our app requires four. Um, and so you know you can't accept that into the, that person into the beta test. Uh, the other thing you need um, is really useful is you you can divide up your your testers as they come into different groups, um, and you can use that later when you're uh, inviting people to test. Um, at the moment I've got my alpha testers group, and I've, I'm creating here a beta testers group, and selecting the users, a lot of my clones, um, uh, into the into that particular distribution group. Um, okay, and so once I've done that, um, I want to get the devices so I can actually build a build, and uh, uh, you know, so I can ship this binary to people. So select the users and choose export devices from the um, list there, and it downloads the text file, which is like tab delimited text file in the format that um, uh, that Apple needs. <laughs> so. <laughs> Back, um, so we have to taking that device list. We've got to go back to the the, the nastiness that is the iOS provisioning portal, um, and we've got to add all these devices uh, into our profile. So the at the moment um, I've got these stars here just to highlight a couple of things. Uh, Apple only lets you have a hundred uh, devices attached to your account per year. Um, so if you're shipping a lot of apps, you better have a lot of accounts. Um, yeah, and or an enterprise account. An enterprise account, yeah, has different um, details. But to be an enterprise, you probably need to jump. 
Yeah, well, there's some restrictions. They may waive them on the case by case basis. Try to ship your app. You can only do it. You can't put it in the app store. Anyway, um, so yeah, that, you've got you've got the hundred users limit um, per year. So what that means is, uh, I guess, on a, whenever you renew your account, they kind of let you have another hundred. Now they don't let you have another hundred, as in you can have two hundred. You can have a hundred. Um, so what they want you to do is to delete uh, devices that you don't care about anymore. Yes, yes. That's what I'm about to say is that um, if you don't, as it says here, if you don't delete the ones before. Uh, you upload a new set, those are considered the ones you care about, so they add into that 100. So, um, yeah, so here I can add another 97 if I don't delete those three, or I can add another 100 if I delete those three already. Um, so, you know, uploading, choose your file, do the business. Uh, the other thing actually to uh, be careful of is if you've got that, that device list, is it, if it contains any IDs that are already in the system, the upload will fail. Um, so you've got to make sure that you, um, uh, you know, trim out any dupes um, for any devices that already exist in, in your system. Um, okay, so I now have guys in my, uh, devices in my list, and so now I have to create an ad hoc provisioning profile, um, and that's fairly simple. Um, now, only uh, people who, um, the only person who can do a provisioning profile for ad hoc or just other distribution is the agent for an account. So if you're a team member on a, an account, you can't do this. You have to be the agent. Um, and I don't think, there's three types of, account, three types of members on um, iOS development accounts. There's the agent, who is essentially the person who's, who is the agent for the entity that has been registered. So it's usually you if you're an independent or the business owner or whoever signed up originally for a business. Um, the, uh, and there's team admins who can administer stuff in the background and there's team members. Um, but only the agent can create distribution profiles. Um, and the reason for that is because you need to have the uh, private key for your provisioning profile. Otherwise you can't sign an app. Um, and you know, you can share that around if you want, but it's probably not a brilliant idea. Um, anyway, so setting up my profile, select an app ID that I that matches my uh, app, and choose the devices from the devices that I've listed that I want to participate in this um, beta. Um, unfortunately, there's no way that TestFlight can really help you with this process. Um, anyway, once you've created that, uh, you get pending, wait a few seconds, refresh the page, um, and it becomes <laughs> active. Um, obviously, they've got that on a message queue in the background. Um, anyway, download the provisioning profile and uh, return to Xcode. So, now back in Xcode, we've got our uh, project. Make sure we've got our ma matching um, app ID. Um, and go into Organizer and drag and drop our provisioning profile we just downloaded into the provisioning profile section. Um, then back into Xcode's project settings for our release build, if using um, the stock settings for Xcode 4, um, the, the next step we have to do, which is archiving our app, uh, uses the release um, build. Now, um, you can set the, the provisioning profile here up to be, you know, the, to match your ad hoc build. Um, but it's probably actually not necessary because of the next step, though. And if you um, if you do this and you're not sharing the private key amongst your peers who are using this project to build their app, and if they try and release uh, build and release, they won't be able to sign the app and they'll get a, a build failure. So probably unnecessary step. But anyway, something to be think about. Anyway, so the next thing we have to do, of course, is build out um, an archive or an IPA file which, um, of, for our application. Um, and once that's built, it turns up in the organizer's archives section. Uh, now we want to share this file with uh, TestFlight. So hit the share button, select an IPA package, and now we have the option of re-signing our um, binary um, so even if we've built the binary with a different um, profile, um, we can choose a different one here and it will re-sign. So that's what I was saying before, this, the previous sort of setting up your release build 
um, is probably a optional step. Just, just a note, I've got a project that will not, for whatever reason, you cannot share it unless you choose don't sign. Right. It will just tell you that there's no file, so I okay. always had to do the previous step, so right. useful for some. Yeah, yeah anyway. There's probably some issues around here. I haven't been playing with it long enough to catch all those it edge cases. Works on some, one project that doesn't work on it's magic. It's magic, yeah. It was, it's public key cryptography, which only only makes sense to the guys at RSA. So, um, anyway, uh, the next thing obviously just saves out the the file as an as an IPA um, onto your computer, which is just a zip file with a particular content, similar to how. Um, uh, you know, you've got file bundles um, on the Mac or you know, app bundles. It's just a particular laid out format with all the signing keys and the actual executable bundled in. Anyway, back to um, test flight. Um, we've got um, now we can upload this build into test flight system. Um, so we do that. Uh, and, you know, you just choose the file you want. Um, write some release notes. This could obviously be whatever you want. You know, you could be new features, bugs fixed, all that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't have any features. So. But anyway, um, and, and then you've got to basically pick who you're going to send it to. Who's, who's going to be participating in the beta for this application? Uh, and this is where the distribution lists come to play. You can, um, whenever you check the boxes, it rechecks and changes the configuration of the boxes, uh, the checkboxes on the teammates. Um, you can also individually check the, the teammates if you want to include someone who's not in one of your distribution lists or what have you. The other really um, cool thing about this is that the, um, when you upload the build, obviously because the IPA file is a well understood file format and, and is documented, um, the test flight guys can pull it apart and figure stuff out. So they figure out up here, for example, that it's an iPhone 4.2 plus X ap application. Um, they also look for, all, they get all the device IDs out of the provisioning profile that you've signed up with, uh, and they'll try and match them up with the people who are on your team. So you'll see uh, items where they're not, you know, it'll show you a, a member who's not actually been recruited into your beta tests, and, and they'll, uh, you have the option of like recruiting them and so on. Uh, anyway, uh, so we um, do the checking and the sending. And uh, now um, test flight tells us sort of the status of, of our, of our um, beta. Um, so this is all real time too, which is pretty cool. It's all Ajax and these things start popping up and stuff as you start, as people start opening their emails um, that, that have just been sent, um, like this one. Um, so this obviously turns up on your Mac and also you can access on your phone. Um, you can reply to it. another really awesome thing is that you can uh, reply and um, say, you know, your app's awesome. And uh, this then obviously goes back to the developer um, and they, you know, get a your app is awesome email, which is pretty cool. But um, even better, that uh, also goes into the feedback section of the apps, uh, of test flights. So all of your feedback on the app, either sent from phone or the desktop, is going to turn up and, and stay here. So you can, uh, you know, use it as feedback, use it as input into your issue system, or um, or whatever. Um, meanwhile, uh, on the tester and their phone, um, you know, they've got the uh, this email there sitting there going install me, and they hit when they hit the install button, they're taken off to the test flight website to the dashboard uh, where you can have multiple apps. It shows you the app obviously that you've just been sent. Um, and you know you got the, the release note um, information here uh, and the giant install button. So when the user hits the install, it just asks them, and then magically it appears on their device, um, which is pretty cool. And then they can play with the app, you know, and 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 uh, break it and stuff. Um, also revoke uh, permissions to the build by just going back to the build and selecting them to the wrong devices. Yes. You can't access that email, but just get the call. Yep. Yeah, you have full control over, over um, a, a variety of different things like access to the builds um, and so on. The um, Going back to test flight, we 
nice thing we see here now, and this all, as I said before, happens sort of live, so if you had a, a fairly large test of the public and you're sending them out and they're all sitting there with bated breath refreshing the mail, um, you see all them sort of opening the mail and you know whether or not they click the link and, and all the rest of it, which is pretty awesome. Um, and you can see who's, you know, the laggards who are not installing your app for some reason, even though they promised to. Um, and you also get, you know, information about what, la you know, who's, who's installing what version and, and so on. Um, yeah, if I, actually going back, I probably should have pointed out something that Sadat pointed out, um, which is uh, a variety of different controls you have. Uh, is it in here? Anyway, oh, there's, you know, you can remove and edit. Um, and it go, going back to the very beginning when you actually set up the, the recruitment page, um, uh, it, you can, you've got an option there um, to add and remove, like you can disable recruitment of the, um, uh, and, and so on. So if you've got enough testers, you're like, oh, I'll take that site down. And then they'll get a page that says, you know, thank you for your interest, but it's uh, beta, you know, recruitment is closed kind of thing. All right. First thing is um, that uh, TestFlight also offers an API. It's really simple. It's uh, just a little JSON uh, API, and you can play with it with curl. It's like it's really simple. There's no very little features on it. They are developing some sort of more advanced API and, and uh, SDK, um, probably for things like user management or what have you. But at the moment, the API is basically upload a build. Um, and uh, you know, you fill in just some settings like what's your uh, distribution list and um, and what uh, uh, provisioning profile and a few other bits and pieces like your release notes and so on. Um, and you know, you could hack, chuck that into a Hudson or Jenkins you know, build, um, so you could be spitting out betas constantly to internal testers, for example. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing that I've noticed is. Uh, challenge testers. Um, even though the system is fairly simple, uh, it still seems that people will think that they can beta test iPhone apps when they don't own iPhones, um, <laughs> and uh, and also that they can beta test for, um, iPhone 4 apps when they have iPhone 3 uh, OS, um, and that they get so far as to register the user, um, but they don't uh, actually register their device. So they'll log in, they'll create, they'll type their username and create a password and go, oh, in. But then they're not actually clicking like the next button, which is to actually register their device. Um, so you end up with a whole bunch of people saying, oh, I want to be a tester, and then it says no devices on that user. Uh, so that's something to be um, careful of. Anyway, anyone's got any questions? You, you said you were dealing with corporate people that didn't necessarily have email, and it seemed that a fair bit of the interaction from the test back to the user was email based. Yeah, yeah. They well, they did have emails, but they just um, the only email address we have for them is their corporate email, and that's probably not their iPhone's email address. So uh, that's where the kind of recruitment and the Bitly link comes in, where you can, uh, you know, if you tell them, well, if you can't access this email on your iPhone, even though you've been invited, um, you know, click this link on your iPhone. Um, or you know, type it in. Bitly is pretty short, so they can type it in to their iPhone, and that'll get them sort of started on that track. Um, but yeah, there's not really much you can do about that. They offer any services to complement the service, like uh, beta uh, uh, reports, issue tracking. No, no. They, um, there's no. Yeah, they expect all that to be internal. Yeah, no, they're solving one problem, not every problem. I oh, just want to add a couple of scripts that David Newman added to this one, so you can just. Yeah, there's there's a um, uh, just today uh, uh, Coco Heads mailing list member sent through a, um, some Ruby code to um, make put, automate yeah yeah adding devices and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's progress in, in those areas. Is it just tracking the website or is it? No, it's using the curl API to upload to to just like. Yeah. Uh, it's handling the builds fairly well, but there's some things missing at the moment. Or makes the patches as well tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good one to be fine. The one that uh, you, know, you get the device list on the test one, you just call the Ruby um, program and it just uploads to your own. Yeah. 
Into the provisioning profile yeah, you're talking about, right? I'll, I'll yeah. go to rate file, which will do the yeah, IKF and the command line upload test file already. Just yep. When he's walks, it looks like it's that way doing it. Yeah, so there's there's some yeah community stuff out there to make some of the stuff a little bit less manual. Uh, and I assume that it must be it's a, it must be a fairly recent version of Xcode. And I don't know is there a, a limit on the iOS version as well? Because I, I noticed that doing over the air updates seems to be a lot uh, better in later versions. Of Xcode yeah, I think iOS four. 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 Uh, iOS four is definitely kind of preferred, um, but you can uh, still is register. Mandatory. Is it mandatory? Yeah, okay. yeah I'm not. Over the air, okay, right, yeah, because you can definitely register with the with test flight with a yeah. three point device. Um, yeah. It sounds like it's particularly useful if you've got large groups of beta testers. Yeah. I'm already a big fan of the open source tool Beta Builder, which basically lets you just take it to your IPA archive um, and it, it spits out a couple of files and manifests and index HTML. You can throw that on any website of your choice, either yep. search from Dropbox or don't come lately. And the guys can just um, grab that link and over yeah. here and install straight to their phones. Yeah. So it avoids a lot of the overhead that this offers. Obviously, this adds some value, I guess, if you've got large. large yeah. Um, I, all of the stuff. I mean, they're not doing anything. It's rocket science, you know. Um, it it it's all available to everyone. Like it, it, all of the information about publishing and creating the the um, enrollment profiles, everything is all in the docs at Apple.com. Um, it is nice and shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty shiny. Many thanks to all the Cocoa Heads attendees for their excellent questions and comments. And thank you for watching my presentation on Test Flight. Thanks also to PlayUp for hosting this month's event. If you would like to know more about PlayUp, visit them on the web at iplayup.com. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter. Oh, 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 oh,